YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and in this video we got another episode of NFL questions from subs a series where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be a part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons shout out to all the team keep it clean patrons I love y'all uh, but for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. All that good stuff is in the description. And if you don't, that's fine too. You know, I'm still going to love you regardless. Team Keep It Clean, this is literally the day after that I'm recording this. The day after that Ravens and Browns game, which was just, ugh. So, at least they got the win though. They found a way to get the win, and that's what matters most. But, this is the day after that game, and we got some fire questions as we always do. Let's do it. Next question came from my guy Showtime. He said, hopefully you're having a good weekend and everything is great. My question is more of an inquiry. Uh, would you do a bit on Kenji Bahar? He's the newest Raven I'm aware of and I didn't see anything on him, so I don't think you've really covered him. Unless I'm blind, which I wouldn't doubt, uh, being as I'm getting pretty old nowadays. Uh, as always, thanks for being a guy that uh, for our team and culture. Hashtag team keep it clean. I appreciate you. And it's all good. We did do a video uh, about Kenji uh, when the Ravens signed him. And what I just feel like he is a um, sort of the safe guy because uh, he was with the Ravens for the entirety of training camp um, and because they had four quarterbacks because they had Lamar, they had Tyler Huntley, they had Trace McSorley, and they had Kenji Bahar. Now, we knew he wasn't going to make the roster, and we had been saying we didn't even think Trace McSorley was going to make the roster. We always thought Trace McSorley would be on the practice squad this year, and that's exactly what happened. The Ravens roll with two quarterbacks, Lamar, obviously, and Tyler Huntley being the number two, because I thought that he secured that number two spot last year. Before this offseason even started, Tyler Huntley secured that number two spot. Um, but with Kenji Bahar, he's actually from um, Baltimore, but he, uh, he is the guy that knows the playbook. And since Trace McSorley got plucked off Ravens practice squad, then that's why it only made sense to bring Kenji back because he's somebody that's familiar with the system, familiar with the coaches, familiar with everybody there. Um, we don't expect him to get any playing time. Uh, I mean, we would hope not because, I mean, Lamar is healthy, Tyler Huntley is healthy. Um, but he's somebody that's sort of that safe option, that just in case, but that safe option because you, you want to have three quarterbacks just in case Lamar's stomach start hurting again on game day or whatnot. But you got to have – it's nice to have somebody that knows everybody and knows the playbook and whatnot. So that, that, that's who he is, and, and that's what uh, the Raven. that's why the Ravens brought him back. Next question came from my boy Sean. Shout out to my guy, man. He, he said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam. I know I haven't chimed in in a while, but I only write them when I really have something to say. We all know as Ravens fans that the team plays down to their competition. Me, myself, I hold Greg Roman completely responsible for the lack of explosiveness in this offense. I believe regardless of the outcome of the season, Greg Roman will not be uh, let go because of the injuries to the running back corps and the offensive line. I say that to say this. I believe that Coach Hobbs will give him a fair chance with a healthy squad to show what he can do instead of with an injured squad. So despite all the slow starts from horrible play calling, I believe they are giving him the benefit of the doubt because of the injury situation on the offensive side of the ball. We as fans must remember the Ravens organization is like a family and you don't kick a family member out without giving him or her a fair chance. And I believe that is what they are doing with this season. Moving forward, we all know that EDC will rebuild the defensive line and secondary the best he can through the draft. And hopefully, next season we will have a healthy offensive line and we get the Juice Man back healthy as well as the Joker. Ooh. But my question to you is, with hopefully going into next season with a healthy team, at least a lot healthier than what we went into this season, how long do you believe it will take the Ravens organization to finally turn the page on Greg Roman? Keep up the good work, and I know I don't chime in as much as I used to, but like I said, I only talk when I really need to be heard, but I'm always watching and liking from a distance, 100, bro. Appreciate it, man. Um, I think, I actually think it could possibly be after this season. I really do, because I do completely understand the, um, the, the part about the injuries. I, I do understand that. Um, and, and with Greg Roman, he never really had a full, a regular off season. Um, because remember 2019, that was his first year. Okay. Boom. Offense goes crazy. Um, the passing game still has some questions about it, but overall the offense goes crazy. Lamar Jackson was MVP. Awesome job. So then 2020 COVID hit and he didn't get to really incorporate much cause he didn't have an off season, even though 
I, I can't really use it as an excuse because you see other teams' offenses and you see what they were able to do despite, like, even look at the Browns. The Browns, new coach, new GM, new everything, and they did their thing. So, uh, uh, yeah, you get me. Um, and then this season, uh, the expectations versus reality were far different. Because he expected to have a J.K. Dobbins, a Gus Edwards, a Ronnie Stanley, a Patrick, Mc a healthy Patrick McCarty for the whole season, uh, a rookie Ben Cleveland. Uh, so it, there's been a lot of um, Tyree Phillips healthy. Like uh, they lost some key pieces, Nick Boyle, but we didn't have those guys. Um, so I, uh, it's it's a they're in a tricky spot, and like you said, they are family. Which is, I feel like it's a gift and a curse all at the same time. Because if, if it's a family member, it can make it harder to make the hard decisions. Um, so, I, But I still do think that it's still a possibility that he could be gone after this season. But uh, it's, I don't know, the more you say it out loud, it just, it just all depends on how the rest of the season falls, man. It depends on how the rest of the season falls. Now, he could possibly get a head coaching opportunity. That's something else to think about, right? Like, Ravens might not have to do the dirty work. They, he, he could get a head coaching opportunity. They, they could be like, oh, well, we wish you the best in your future endeavors. And then they could move on that way. So that's something that we got to keep in mind as well. Um, but I think, yeah, just depending on how the rest of the season goes and then, of course, and hopefully playoff goes too, uh, everything just rides on that. And not only for him with the Ravens, but him with possibly another team too. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, should the Ravens try to bring back Hayden Hurst from ATL? Hashtag team keep it clean and hashtag positive. It seemed like he might be on his way out. Um, I believe, yeah, he was drafted with Lamar Jackson. So he, I don't think they picked up the fifth year option on him. So he is going to be a free agent. Um, I, I don't think he will come back, though. Like, for what? He, he wanted to go out somewhere and be a starter. And, I mean, it just didn't work out in Atlanta. Uh, they end up getting Kyle Pitts, and it's, it's like, oh, yeah, Hayden Hurst. And now, right now, I think he's on injury reserve, I believe. Um, but I, I wouldn't mind if they got him, but I don't think he would want to come back because he'd be in the same situation that he was trying to get out of, and he wanted to be a starter. He obviously wouldn't be a starter with the Ravens. Next question came from Carly. He said, hey, man, hope all is well with you and your loved ones. Appreciate it. I wanted to know your thoughts on the Ravens potentially using Devin DuVernay the way that the 49ers used Debo Samuel. They like to run sweeps with him out of the backfield. Should we do the same thing? <laughs> oh, we had a fun que a couple of questions from subscribers episodes based around this question before. And yeah, I, I would love if they did that. It seems like they tried to a tiny bit. And it seems that some games they go with it a lot. In other games, they just do a tiny bit of it. Just a little bit. Um, but I think they, I think it could work out for him. Devin DuVernay, he already built like a running back. He can catch. Um, you don't have to use him in a traditional running back role, but just sort of like a scat back, him catching some passes out of the backfield, him coming out of the backfield. Just you could switch it up a little bit with Devin DuVernay because he can, he can be a gadget. He doesn't only have to be a gadget. He's a wide receiver, but he can be that guy that can really just switch some things up and add some creativity to this offense without it getting too cute. Next question came from my guy Camden. He said, hey, Engraven, hope everything is going good with the fam. I've noticed throughout your videos that whenever the topic of re-signing Calais Campbell, Brandon Williams, or Derek Wolf comes up, uh, you always tend to say, let them walk. But how much can you really revamp a D-line in one year? I know it hasn't been good at times, but Matabike and Owe can't hold down the line by themselves. I feel like we have other needs to target, and to not bring at least one of them back is silly on the Ravens' part. Much love, Engraven. Sorry for the long questions. I statement. Just wanted to hear your opinion on it after the ugly game on Sunday versus the Browns. Well, the reason that I say say that is because um, with Derek Wolf, you've already seen what life is like without Derek Wolf this entire year. So it's like he's gone already. With Calais Campbell, I would not want the Ravens to let him go, but he's he's already been talking about retirement. So I wasn't saying that oh the Ravens should just let Calais Campbell go. No, he's when you start talking about retirement, you're going to retire very very soon. It's on your mind. And with Brandon Williams. That's one that I see them. I see him. I see them letting him go um, because of the cap hit, and because I think they just want to get more athletic on the defensive line. Now you're saying you can't revamp a, a D line in one year. You can. You have the draft. You have free agency. That's how you revamp any position in one year. In every year, um, and you it would be a lot of responsibility on the new guys, but it's not anything that's impossible.
Next question also came from Cam. He said, hey, Graven, how's the family doing? After the Browns game, we learned many things good and bad, such as Wink finally having the ability to react and make adjustments. But we also saw bad, such as Greg Roman not being able to make those adjustments. I know the lack of points on the board wasn't entirely his fault as Lamar had four picks. Uh, but you have to think the play calling has something to do with the defenders being able to make those plays on the ball. My question to you is, what does Greg have to do to put points up on the board early? And to keep his job as he's been getting on the warmer side of the already hot seat. Uh, sorry for the long question. Hope it gets to you. Hashtag team. Keep it clean. Ooh, that's a funny one. Um, they they got quick passes would help. Um, because I know it's something that a lot of team keep it clean has pointed out, which is true. The Ravens, they tend to have a lot of their passing plays are these long, these slow developing plays. And you ain't really got the offensive line for that. In order for a play like for Lamar to complete a deep pass, he has to run around. He has to. We, we, we don't want it to be where every single pass that Lamar Jackson throws or completes where he has to run around in order to get it done. So you got to come up with some shorter stuff. We still, we, I couldn't believe it last night because the Ravens actually threw a screen to the running back. It was crazy. They faked the reverse. to I think they faked it to Hollywood. Then they faked it to Duvernay. They faked it to somebody else. All the meanwhile, the running back was creeping through. He went through the offensive line, and then he was just sitting there waiting for the screen. And they threw him the screen. I was like, oh, my goodness. We did it. We like, we've been looking for that for years. And they finally did one. And it was successful. I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. I was, I, was, I was so happy, but that's what you got to do. When your offensive line is as bad as Ravens is, you got to find ways to get creative to put them in better positions to succeed. Uh, I think the, if the running game was doing a lot better, if they because the offensive line could charge at people, that could give them a boost of confidence and help them uh, instead of everybody just charging at them with these passing plays. But if the running game was doing better, then that would help the offensive line as a whole too. Um, like we said, screen plays, uh, having Lamar roll roll out a bit, um, just to just to help them out, man. Anything anything to help the offensive line out that will help the entire offense out. Next question came from Shantae. He said, "Hey, Graven, hope everything is great for you today. I'm trying to steady my heart from giving me a heart attack because of the Sunday night game with the Browns. Defense really showed out, and props to Wink for adjusting. So I'm very proud of them. But somehow the offense couldn't show out. See, everybody's on the same page." Uh, this has been a big problem from the start of the season. The offense is always starting slow, except for in that Chargers game and in the Denver game. Denver game, they started a little slow, too. Uh, if you want to count that, oh, she said if you want to count that, too. Okay. Uh, with that in mind, on to my question. Do you think the Ravens will give Greg Roman an ultimatum saying either you come up with a good game plan for these next couple of games coming up or we will fire you? Or do you think that they would just wait till the end of the season to fire him? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts. And as always, have a pleasant day. Appreciate that, Shantae. I don't think the Ravens would do anything like that, where they would come out and be like, all right, and obviously not publicly, but even privately, I don't, I don't think they would do that. Uh, hey, either you get this right or you're gone. I don't think they would do that. Um, I think if they, if they were to fire Greg Roman, then it would be after the season. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure they didn't do that with Marty. And I mean, they didn't even fire Marty. <laughs> they didn't even fire him. They, they, they made up that position and they, they let him decline it. So that was why he departed from the Ravens. Mm, yeah, okay. So I, I just yeah. So I don't even and and look, this 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 is a common topic on this episode of question from subscribers with Greg Roman. Um, I don't even think that he would get fired. I think that something creative would happen uh, if the Ravens wanted to depart from Greg Roman and if he didn't get another job somewhere else. I think they would get creative with it. Next question came from my guy Manuel. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Shout out from Mexico. I was watching the game, and a few hours ago, I couldn't help but notice that though in those four interceptions, even though one wasn't Lamar's fault, I was thinking of Lamar reading coverage and thought, is that entirely on him, or is the coach not telling Lamar this or that? Uh, and if the coaches don't know how to beat it, and Lamar is pressing for answers, does it mean he has outgrown them and needs a more advanced?" QB and offensive coordinator to help him read those coverages. By the way, PQ and the defense show up tonight, but it was because the general was there watching. LOL. We're talking about Ray Lewis. Uh, stay safe and hats off to Miles Garrett for being a sportsman on that touchdown. Guess Clowney regrets not taking that Ravens contract after tonight. <laughs> I like that one. Um, I, I, I definitely wouldn't say from those interceptions that Lamar... Uh, has outgrown the coaching staff. Uh, I don't think those are good examples of that. Um, I do think that uh, I, I still wonder, like, 
how much because those interceptions the, the three of them three out of the four were on Lamar that's not on coaching staff that, that's on Lamar straight up um I just sometimes I I, I I wonder now I know Keith Williams and T Martin have had a, a big impact but I wonder uh how much of a voice they have in just everything um now with G Row I, I I do think that there could be an offensive coordinator. I feel like there could be off offensive coordinators who could get more out of Lamar and who could do more for Lamar. Um, Giro has been a nice introductory guy, has done his thing. Ravens offense has been overall, they, they've done their thing. Um, but they, there's just been this, I know the offensive line is bad. I know they beat up. Um, but what, when are we going to finally counter that? When are we gonna finally be like, okay, we know the offensive line is beat up. All right, let's let's counter this. Let's do some plays. Let's design some stuff that helps this offensive line out. Let 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 let's get some different guys involved in different ways. And and they early on, like they they've been doing pretty good with Hollywood this year. With Bateman, it's been up and down because it started off up, and then just the uh, the play time has been confusing, and it's it's been very uh, almost concerning too. Uh, especially in this Browns game. I just, I've just i been super confused on that. I'm not sure what happened or what was going on. Um, but you just, you just hope and you wait for the Ravens to really just, again, adjust. Just like Wink finally adjusted last night to his situation, Greg Roman, he has to adjust to his situation too. And Ravens been scraping by. But Ravens had opportunities to really take off and it's not all on Greg Roman. Greg Roman ain't throw those picks. <laughs> he sure ain't throw those picks at all. But I'm just talking about besides last night. Um, they 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 just got to do better. Even including last night too, as far as the offensive line, you got to do a better job of helping those guys out. Because offensive line, again, we said it earlier. If offensive line is playing better, then that makes everything. Better. Next question came from my guy Dominic. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Hope everything is well. Defense has been looking promising these last couple of games, other than the big plays. But someone who really has been coming around is Tyus Bowser. He has been getting consistent pressure and has a couple of sacks in the last couple of games. Also, see that they are putting him in coverage more, and he was one-on-one -on -one with a tight end on those last two plays of the Browns game. I just want to know what you think of Bowser so far this year. Yeah, he's certainly been coming along strong, especially these last." A couple of games and he's just been showing his value to the Ravens he's been showing how valuable he is to them and the different things that he can do Bowser was somebody that was known for his coverage skills in college I believe he was known for that so the Ravens are putting him in a position where he did well in school uh, where he was known for excelling at um, and allowing him to be a pass rusher as well so you know what the Ravens is all about the more you can do Next question came from my guy Lance. He said, good morning. Hope everything's going well with you this morning. I want to start off asking you, who do you think the underdogs are going into the playoffs and wild card teams? Do you think teams like the Patriots or Raiders can upset big teams like the Bills, Kansas, or even the Ravens? Yes. Yes. And it sounds like you're just talking about the AFC. There is no underdog in the AFC. There is no big dog in the AFC. Every single team is suspect in the AFC. Every single one. There's no clear cut. All right, this team is so dominant. This team is just killing it. No, no, nobody is dominant. Nobody is absolutely that number one team. Ravens technically y'all by their record, but when you see them play, it's like, oh, this is the number one seed in the AFC. So it's it's wide open, like literally. Next question came from my guy, uh, Rich Boy James. Can I get some money? He said, man, Lamar can't have a bad game, but the media will forgive Stafford for three straight. What's that all about? Ooh, I don't, I didn't think about that. Oh, cause yeah, that that game against the Titans or the, those oh those picks were bad. He yeah oh man yeah. So I guess Lamar in the they weren't pick sixes that Lamar ain't throwing no pick sixes at least. But he was he was throwing some Staffords against the Browns. That's what we gonna call them. They go, we gonna call them Staffords. I know one of my guys who one of my best friends. He's a Rams fan, and uh, so no offense to you, my friend. Yeah, I, I still love you, but I just had to throw that in there. Anyway. Uh, he said, even though it's not an excuse, we can't get no sympathy for all the injuries depleting this roster. Not even half as much that Baker gets all by himself. The injury card, that is. <laughs> and Lamar actually missed the game, which I think was the reason for this week's performance. Help me understand, Engraven. Appreciate the answer. I told you, man. Uh, Lamar Jackson, he, he's not judged the same way other quarterbacks are. 
He he can't have bad games. He can't mess up. He's not allowed to. When, when Lamar has a, a good game, there's always an excuse as to why. Lamar has a bad game. The world's crashing down. Everything's coming to a, a halt and end. That's a wrap. Oh, he's not a franchise quarterback. He don't deserve to be paid. This is the guy that the Ravens. They Lamar has a bad game. Everybody question not everybody, but so many people question everything about him. They they question his entire career. They question if he's really that good. They question if he deserves the money. They they, they question if he's really a good good leader for this Ravens team. They question if he's a really a franchise quarterback. All these questions come out if he has a bad game. But if he has a good game, then oh well no nah, it's because no no it's because it. Nah, it's cause of it. It, it, he can't get that credit. So it's just that's that that's the way it's gonna be with a lot of people. Throughout his whole career Sad But we've been saying this since 2018 He's never going to get looked at the same As other quarterbacks And the last question Came from my boy Droid209 He said Big Bill <laughs> No I got my hair back now it's, It done grew back So we back No more little Bill in the building But anyway He said Man this game gave me gray hairs Everywhere Oh trust me I got plenty of them too He said Look Ravens Nation Brady Eli Manning Peyton Manning Joe Flacco Joe Namath Dan Marino Troy Aikman Russell Wilson Big Ben Norm Van And many other quarterbacks Have thrown four or more picks in a single game all are super bowl champions one bad game doesn't define a player it's how you finish we can't write off lamar because truth be told he is a top three quarterback in current time and i stand behind that anyway sorry about the rant question <laughs> you're good man um question what do we need to do to fix the offensive side of the ball I feel like our defense is solid and can stop Harris in the run game. Uh, thanks to Graven for giving us fans a platform for the Ravens questions and nothing but positive vibes. Respect, big brother. Appreciate you, man. Um, mm, I, same thing we've been saying earlier. Just put guys in position to succeed. Now, I, I agree about the first part you said when you listen to all the quarterbacks and all the four interception games. Um, yeah, you, you can't write off Lamar from, from one game, even though some fans... And media people, so they, they just wait. They, they do it all the time. They, they wait. They sit back and they wait. And like, oh, okay, when is he going to have a bad game? Okay. When is he going to have a bad game? Come on, Lamar. Come on. Come on. They, they wait for a bad game just so they can say, hey, see? <laughs> He's not that good. But you know how it goes. Now, now, as far as fixing the offensive side of the ball, um, I think just getting guys, getting guys involved earlier. Too. We mentioned the quick passes before mentioned mentioned the screen game to the running backs before. Uh just incorporating more of that. Um more of Rashad Bateman early on, because we could see that he's a playmaker. We could see that he can make some stuff happen for sure. Um and just Lamar, he has to do a better job of seeing the field. Uh he has to do a better job of taking check downs too. That's something that we've been talking about all year too. Cause Lamar, you know Lamar, he that's big play Lamar. He don't want that little stuff done. Nah, little play, no, nah, he, he want them big plays. Um, so they they gotta he gotta do better at taking them check downs. They gotta design more ways for for some short passes, just to sort of get him into a rhythm, keep that offense moving. Cause it ain't, it ain't gotta be all or nothing every single play. You can get piece by piece by piece. Um, and again, with the running game, we we hope that it would be better. I say continue featuring Devontae Freeman. Um, and, and trying to get Tyson into a little bit of a rhythm, too. It, it couldn't hurt at this point because, I mean, you see Latavius Murray, like, not that he's a bad running back, but it just, it's just not there, at least in my eyes. It's just, it's just not there. With Tyson, try to get him into a rhythm. Like, I would, I would say give, give him Latavius Murray carries. It could not hurt. It couldn't hurt. It couldn't. Um, I mean, the offensive line is in the shape that it's in, but Devontae Freeman, he be, he be finding some little lanes here and there. And so it, it couldn't hurt. Um, but, yeah, I really feel like the short passing game, the quick passing game, the, 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 the check downs, that could be, like, huge. That, that could go a long way um, in just really helping this offense, helping this offensive line out, too, uh, because they back there blocking forever. Every, every pass play is this long pass play. They're going to get tired. They already been getting beat up all year. So doing stuff like that could help them out a ton. And this last part of the video, uh, it's a special part that came from my guy, uh, Terrell B. Uh, and he talked about for the second year uh, in the last three years, our organization, the West Baltimore Ravens, uh, have gone all the way to regionals and won to be invited to the Nationals in Kissimmee, Florida. 
So that's close to Orlando. So it's about three hours from here. But anyway, he said, we need help getting them down there. And we usually try to show a good time during the week of the tournament. Uh, our team is in the heart of the middle of Baltimore City, and we do not want to burden them with donating money if there's help out there that your platform can help with. Uh, if anyone can assist or donate to the GoFundMe page, it will definitely help a lot, even if they want to remain anonymous. So I will leave uh, all of that information if you want to help the West Baltimore Ravens, uh, if you want to help these boys come down here to Florida, because I mean, why, why wouldn't you? Like, who doesn't want to come down to Florida, and especially so they can play uh, in, the, in, in the regional tournament? Like, that's big. So if you want to help them, the link for all of that will be down below in the description. Shout out to Graven.